Good morning, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for being here for this webinar that covers uh, um, site vision. As you can see, the theme of this is the power of information reimagined. So our agenda for today, our topics of discussion, the breakdown will just be site vision concept, hardware, software, and application. So the objective behind this simple agenda is to make augmented reality become real to you. So we aren't going to fluff this presentation, but instead we're going to make you see how simple it is to put, put this thing in your hand and start working. So let's start off first with the concept of what is sight vision. And let's see that this isn't really something completely new. Actually, we're in a visual age. Everything around us is more and more focused on appealing to the eye. An augmented reality, placing objects in places having nothing, it's awesome. See, there's a dinosaur. Now you see it, now you don't. The idea here is that sight vision is really not that different. You see, we're bringing augmented reality to the geospatial world. One of the things though that sight vision does that a movie actually doesn't, is it actually gives you the opportunity to bring your own model into the field making your own augmented reality become something that's real to you. You see, unlike the movies, we can control this augmented reality. We can interact with it. We can also report on it. And I don't know about you, but I've been waiting on this for a long time. So who can actually benefit from this technology? Well, civil engineers, surveyors, locators, contractors, architects, actually anyone in the geospatial world can really benefit from a tool like this in placing your own designs out there in reality. But what is needed for sight vision to work? All right, well, let's just hit these topics right off the bat and we'll go into details. We need the hardware. We need a trouble ID. We need a subscription to Side Vision. We need an Android phone, and we need a model. But let's look now at hardware. All right. So the idea is that before we get into the workflow of that, so the hardware itself, as we said before. We'll look at the unboxing method. <clears throat> we'll look at how simple it is to put together or attach all of that file, um, all of that um, hardware together, and how to calibrate it. So first, let's see what's in the box. It's as simple as that. Inside the box, we have the Trimble Sight Vision Integrated Position System. We have the actual mounting apparatus that it sits on, on top of our pole. We have a USB cable that transfers the information from the sensory device to your phone using sight vision. We have a shade cap, and we have a mounting apparatus that sticks to the back of your phone. Well, let's see how simple it is to actually put that device together. So let's first look at how to attach the actual mounting device to the back of the phone. We're given a template, and through sight vision, we have a calibration routine that allows us to get a simple line that allows us to line up that template so that that apparatus perfectly sticks perfectly on the back of the phone before we actually place it on the actual sight vision um, hardware. Next, we'll look at how to actually connect the phone to the actual hardware. So using that USB cable, we 
basically open up the latch and that same mounting apparatus we put on the back of our phone, we'll just simply slide it into the slot and then simply lock it and plug in the USB cable. And that's it from the hardware standpoint. Well, not quite. Do you notice that the phone actually has a rubber case around it? Well, every one of you will have a different thickness to your actual phone case. So therefore, there is a part that's also involved, which is calibrating, just ensuring that any measurements you take relative to the phone and its camera is uh, calibrated correctly. So how is, how is that done? Well, the idea is you're simply using the actual camera and the location from the camera to the center of the actual hardware, from the camera to the actual uh, receiver on the top, and also getting the offset for all of those EDM distances that you will take um, or AR uh, measurements that you will take. You're getting the actual calibration as well for the thickness of the phone case and dividing it by two. So simple example here in point, I have a ruler or either a tape, and I'm just basically measuring from those same locations as indicated earlier. So from our camera to the center, and you're recording that information from the camera to the actual receiver's um, rim, and the thickness of the actual phone, the case included, and dividing it in half, and then you're recording that information and placing it inside of the Site Vision software. And that's it in a simple nutshell as to the hardware. Now, before we start diving into the actual software itself, how simple is it to put Site Vision on our phone? Well, that's relatively really simple. We just simply go to our Google Play Store, type in Trimble Site Vision, <laughs> and we just download that software. Now, the question that you guys might be asking is, well, what kind of a phone can I really use? Well, right now we're using Android phones and this has to support AR core. And so that would be our Samsung S8 Plus or our Note 8 and up, or that will also be Google Pixel 2 and up, all right? Once we install, and the device will also install Trimble Catalyst service and the firmware upgrades, and that's it. Sight Vision is now on our phones. Now, another software that we will interact with is going to be Trimble Connect. This is uh, the actual software that allows us to be able to load models, and this software is cloud-based. So we're gonna take all of our designs, and our associated files, and we're gonna dump it inside of a project location. When we go onto Site Vision on our phone, we're gonna pull out these same information from the cloud on our phone and use them to measure against. And it's as simple as that for the collaborative um, software. Now we'll look at the layout of Site Vision. Now, there are a lot of buttons around the peripherals. However, we don't want to get too distracted. At the end of the day, the main objective is to see augmented reality, your model placed in reality. The example in point here is that a simple surface is overlaid on top of uh, the actual existing um, ground. Now, how simple is the workflow then of using Site Vision, of loading a model? What we're gonna do then is we're gonna break this down into four simple steps. So the workflow involves first getting good position for the device, next loading the model, next using that model and measuring in relation to it, and then uploading that information for review for QC, QA. So let's start off first with how simple is it to identify getting a fixed solution? Well, once we plug in the USB to our phone, you'll see a notification that we're gonna use that service. Now in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you'll notice that it gives a symbol of a satellite 
And that's us being able to detect satellite information. So you'll start seeing the amount of satellites counting. So two, three, four, five. And the idea is after a while, it will change from red to yellow to green. So if we go ahead and we start walking up and down in clear areas or just standing still, we'll eventually get that precision getting better and better to a point we're actually going to see this thing become green and it's going to indicate the precision level that we're, we're achieving. Now, if we actually tap on the actual icon of the satellites, we'll get more information. For example, am I getting a service that's fixed? Well, if it's green, it's going to be fixed. How often am I getting information from my provider? That indication is there as well, as well as a lot more information. But the objective at the end of the day is that we want the best possible precision because that will affect how we relate to our model and to reality. All right. Now we move in the workflow process now to loading the model. So let's see now what's the process like for loading the model. Well, there are three steps for loading our model. What are the three steps? We have a manual a measured method and an automatic uh, method of placing our model inside of site vision. Each of these have their own advantages, but also have their own limitations. So let's first look at what is it like to manually place a model. So you'll notice at the top inside of site vision's interface, when we tap on the menu button, there's always an option to load a model. This is where we interact with, again, that same software we said earlier, Tremble Connect. So in this case, we're picking a hydrant and we're going to load that into our model. All right, so here it is. Now we're going to go place. And it's at this point that we're going to go through the method of manual placement. So the idea is that we can place models based on either a top or a bottom. And this is simply because some models are below ground and some models are above ground. And so therefore you're picking based on where you want the actual object to be affixed to ground, right? Case in point, we're going to use bottom of model because the fire hydrant obviously will sit on the actual ground and not being below the surface. So we're going to hit bottom and we're going to hit start. The object will now appear in space and we're gonna center the model so it's in front of us. Once that's in front of us, then we're gonna specify how high or how low that model will be by simply moving our finger up and down on the screen. And then we afterwards will place it left and right until we're exactly in the location of where we want it to be. Now we'll do the QCQA by just walking around, just making sure that it's placed properly in that location. And that is the method of placing a model manually. Now, although this is uh, the least accurate method of placing a model, it is the quickest way. So if we wanted to quickly do a rough check on something, or if we wanted to actually just look internally in the model, this is the quickest way to put it outside in the field. Now, what about the next method, which is measured? So again, same as before, we go load, go into Tremble Connect, pick a model. Out. In this example, we're gonna pull out a SketchUp model of an entire building. So again, as we said before, when we go ahead and use site vision for placements, we have to be conscious that we're using good precisions, all right? So because this routine involves measurements, our icon needs to be green, all right? Another thing as well is we get a screen that allows us to be able to choose what the pole height is. At this point, we're taking our site vision unit and we're placing it on top of a pole. And that will allow us to get a, a, a good um, reference in placing our actual model out there in the field, all right? So once we actually decide that we're using the bottom of the model and we are also picking the correct height of the rod and where the receiver is relative to ground. The next step is we measure the first location that we know that model will be placed. So measure, count stone, that's it. And then it will bring us to the model and we'll pick where on that model 
that the first measurement will correlate to. So any one of those corners you pick, and that's the first corner. Next, you walk to the next point and you measure there and you'll repeat the same process. You'll now be given the model again and be asked, where do you want to place that second point? So you pick on your model. And then last but not least is now that model will be rotated, oriented, and scaled according to the information given, right? And it will be placed exactly in that location. So you're asked to walk until it is resolved and know our model sits exactly where we said we wanted it to be placed. Now, all of this is correlated to the quality of the actual unit that we're using. So if we want higher precisions, obviously we'll need data that was recorded by a high precision device. So that leads us then into the last step. So if we want it to be even tighter in terms of placing our model, then there is a method that allows us to be able to use survey grade quality um, point information, and we would be able to use a software, for example, case in point TBC, and we would be able to move our model relative to those survey points. So example here, we have a simple PDF, a uh, raster-based PDF, and we're just simply telling it we want it to be rotated based on the survey information relative to those lines on the PDF. So once we kick out that uh, referenced file, we also want to kick out as well the coordinate system that it's associated with. Now we can kick out the coordinate system out of TBC in either a DC file, in either a CAL file, or also a JXL file, a Trimble JXL file, right? So here in this example, we're just exporting that CAL file. And that CAL file is what's going to allow the software to be able to know where to place that PDF file. So remember we spoke about Trimble Connect earlier, and we spoke about simply grabbing that file, dragging it, and dropping it inside of Trimble Connect? This video is going to show you exactly the same process. Dragging all of those files out that you've exported onto your computer, simply dragging and dropping them in. And then when you load your model, you don't have to do manual or measure. You just simply start walking and QCQA where that PDF is out there in the field. This is the most accurate method of going ahead and doing this, but obviously it involves more steps than doing the measurement routine. So as we said before, each of these methods have their own advantage, right? And their own limitations. And you're the one who decides based on the accuracy you're after and the workflow that you're trying to accomplish. So now we've gone through the first two steps of the workflow. We have good quality GPS data um, signal and we've loaded our model successfully. Now, what can we do in terms of measurement? So in terms of measurement, um, we're just going to break this down into its simplest form. There are three sensory devices on our unit. We have GNSS, EDM, and AR technology. Now we're gonna show in this video an example of each of these, all right? So the first one in point is, if you are a person who already uses GNSS or GPS, you already know just touching the button stores a point information. And the symbol is indicated in the top left-hand corner of that window. All right, so this is just a GNSS shot. You have a name, a code, a pole height, and the associated coordinate based on the observation. You can also use the EDM as well. So that EDM is going to give us a correlation to the existing GNSS point on that object so that you're able to finally get a norting and easting relative to that. And then there is AR. AR is basically you observing to the augmented reality, right? So case in point, that total station is obviously not there. So we're observing to that and we're getting information relative to that, to that augmented reality. So three different sensory options giving you three different measurements. And they're all illustrated by means of an icon in the top left hand 
corner. Good. Now there are many more measurement routines, many more functions, but we're just talking about the basic workflow. So if you want to measure on your model, if you want to measure without the use of the model, or you want to measure using an EDM or a GNSS, you have those options. Now, what does it look like from a QCQA standpoint um, in terms of observing, for example, um, data that you've captured already in the field or notes that you're taking? What does that look like? How does the software deal with that? Because that's a major part of most softwares that are used in the geospatial world. Collecting data and then QCQing that data afterwards and using it for some function. So we'll now look at some of that information. So case in point, we can create what is known as a to-do list, right? And a to-do list basically allows us to archive a picture as well as some instructions to someone. And if we go to that model in Trimble Connect, that's uploaded directly to the model. So here's an example of the house, and I wanna check the to-do list and that's right in that corner, and you're able to see all the uploaded to-do lists related to that. So you're able to see who got assigned that information, whether or not it was checked, what date it was done, the picture that's associated with it, what type of inquiry that is, and all of that you can review as well. Now, along with that to-do list, we also have taken some EDM, AR, GNSS shots out there in the field, right? How does that look to us? Well, that's stored or pushed to the cloud as a CSV. And in that CSV, you're able to download that to whatever device you're using and review that in an Excel spreadsheet. So you're able to see the columns that are correlating to whatever it is that you captured out in the field. So example in point here, you can have all of your names, all of your codes, what method was used to measure to it, all the latitude and information associated, all the northing and eastings, all the slope distance. So a lot of information right there in your at your fingertips by means of the upload from that um, from that um, site vision software. And so that, in a nutshell, is the workflow behind um, site vision. So we're able to get that fixed GNSS solution, load that model measure all of that information, and then go ahead and upload and review all that information that we've captured out there in the field. So now we'll move on to application, right? And there are many different applications because of the versatility in this tool, right? We just showed a simple workflow process, but as we said before, this affects so many people who are in the geospatial world whether you're doing surveying, whether you're doing corridor designs, earthworks, uh, locating, construction, architecture, landscaping. It just depends on how you think of using the software. So let me give you a couple of examples. Let's look at corridor designs, right? So we can load our entire design model into this space, right? Whether it's using Trimble um, um, Business Center, uh, as being the actual tool that you're loading the model. And you'll have some unique features that are in there, such as transparency to see how it's overlaid on top of things and cross-sectional to see the cut. So you're able to see, for example, the different layers, the different surface information, or the different utilities that are existing within your, um, your road design, right? So from a QCQA standpoint, this is a really good tool for persons who are just going out there to see what, how that looks in that space. Now, what about earthworks? Well, again, that earthwork can be related to corridor information, but it can also be related to subdivisions. Um, so we can still use those functions on the side, transparency, cross-section, but we have a nice feature for measurement, which is uh, to extract cut and fill information relative to our actual design data. So case in point here, as you see, moving across, observing with the use of the EDM, we're able to actually see what the actual cut and fill information is in those locations, all right? 
we every time you take one of those as well you can also see what the staked information is so you can see whether or not things have changed over time the cut and fill is now closer to where you want it to be now you're going to start doing instead of rough grading more precise um, types of cuts all of that information can be pushed to the field um, and from the field to the office and back and forth right so you're able to see um, as well other kind of design data as well such as uh, um, your um, utilities um, sanitary um, as well as the structures for drainage when it comes on to the construction and with those nice feature of transparency and cross-section you can see how it sits in the space so this really increases your ability to see things when you're out there in the field instead of staring at that um, paper copy of the plan and trying to figure out exactly how things work right so that is from an earthwork standpoint what about from a utility standpoint persons who are using for example the rd units right um well, we're able to actually see what is below ground as well, right? So we can see all of our chambers, the pipes that are in there. But one of the nice features that exists within um, Site Vision is this uh, um, pit view, where we're able to actually see into the space. Um, so it basically allows us to see a hole um, and see how all of those actual surfaces run into that chamber. And what is also good? is that you can actually lock that thing in its uh, um, coordinate location. And then you can actually walk around that and actually look down into that pit to see what exactly is inside of that hole. So that's below ground, but then you also have the ability to load as well above ground services as well, so power lines. So you're not limited at all by means of what kind of utilities you can actually load inside of the site vision software, right? So you have uh, such tools such as the viewing distance, so you can be able to actually see close objects or how far away those are, as well as with the transparency and cross-sectional tools, right? And as I said before, this is something that really will benefit those who are doing locates and they really wanna just know roughly where stuff are without even taking out the locator yet. Just kind of getting a perception of what exactly I'm going to have to trace, right? Now, some other features, as we said before, that exist, if I want to, for example, capture a shot on this catchment base and record it, I can actually store that information. But then if I want to also know the drainage runoff um, to the exist from the from one end to the existing um, road, I can actually enable an actual grade check um, function inside the software, tapping on the object of interest and tapping on the other object of interest, and that will give us what the grade percentage is. So really a powerful tool when it comes on to being able to do um, the utility locates, seeing information related to that um, discipline. What about like um, construction? So some nice tools exist in here as well that help persons in that field, cross-sectional cut, transparency, but I want to actually slow this down and help you to see this. Did anyone see this with their eyes? Yeah. In this example, we're seeing that there is a clash here. Obviously this runs right into the cross beam. So whoops, someone made a mistake. Now, seeing this in the office, at a computer and seeing this in the field while standing up and looking in it, they're completely two separate worlds apart. And so once we actually see that clash, now we can actually record that, upload that to Trimble Connect so the office now knows, okay, well, we need to fix this problem. So here, making a note, structural clash, something's wrong, dating it, when did I, when did this happen, telling it, what kind of issue it's going to be? It's going to be a clash, right? And then you just simply store that information. No, someone in the office can look at that. Look at this. Someone designed a duck work, but uh, yeah, that's not completely attached to the building, right? So again, make another note. This is incomplete. 
And again, we're going to walk out and we're going to use our cross-sectional view. Whoa, look at this. There is obviously something wrong here. This is a clash. And we can turn on layers above, below, ground, so that we can see more details to identify more issues that might exist within our model. So really a powerful tool there. Now, for landscaping, I really like this one. And I'm going to just emphasize again why I like this. So here in this example, we have um, that area excavate, excavated, but now we're going to place something back here. What design do we want to put there? So we can have multiple models loaded in, and we can actually present this to our clients or to our stakeholders so that they can have a say as to what that looks like. Actually, we can literally put site vision right in their hand and have them walk around in the space. And this will immediately improve the actual quality um, of what these guys um, can appreciate versus seeing it on a computer screen or even seeing it on a paper plan, right? They're able to walk around in their own thing, using this thing in their hand with a phone and just looking around at objects they like. Maybe I like this fireplace better. Or you might say, well, you know what? Sure, let's make a note of that. I'm going to put in some young plants. What kind of plants would you want? And you can have many different layers of different things you want to show them. So you can open up the layer structure and turn on certain features, turn off certain features. This just really gives something to the client that they can really say wow about if you're presenting this as a sales pitch to someone. So there are many explanations of applications. I could go through so much more, but you know what? I'm going to kind of move on. But the idea is all of this, all of these different designs, they're coming from different solutions. So many of you have many different softwares in your office. You might have Esri. You might have some kind of an Autodesk products, maybe Civil 3D. You might be using TBC. You might be using SketchUp. But the idea is no matter which one of these, there is a way to funnel information into Site Vision so that you are able to be able to use those same functions that we showed earlier. And here at Cancel, we have uh, developed many different workflows that are associated with those different platforms. And we also tailor a lot of these based on maybe some others that you have. I mean, we're only showing four here just simply because these are the main ones used in the current market. But there are so many other softwares out there that we can actually use and show the process of how to push things inside of Site Vision so that you can actually be able to do your QCQA. You can also do your own um, presentation to your stakeholders or your clients that are involved, right? So there are various different methods, but at the end of the day, our objective is to place the model in its space as accurate as possible. We want to be able to QCQA and say, hey, there's a mistake here. And we also want to be able to record that information for prosperity, but as well as to do modifications to existing designs, or we might want to actually appease our clients by doing changes. So all of this is wrapped up in a workflow. And we offer to our clients many different workflow processes that can make this possible. So at this point, guys, this is going to um, be the end of uh, the actual presentation. And so now we're going to move into our question and answer segment. So the floor is now open for all those who want to um, ask questions based on the information covered or also um, based on what your research has led you to so far. So floor is open.
Uh, all right, so we got some questions coming in. Um, Ali, would you like to read off some of these questions for us based on which ones we can answer right now? Yeah, sure. So um, first question here says, is there any functionality to account for multiple units in a field utilizing the same model? Good question. So the objective behind um, Site Vision is that we have a specific account um, linked to, to Site Vision. And so when we're logging into our unit, um, every one of us will have to um, access that based on that username and password. Ali, you want to add to that as well? No, that's it. I guess you uh, you covered it pretty well. Yeah. So the question we have here, uh, are you done with that, Marvin? Yep, sure. So the second question we have here says, does the GPS quality cause problems when working inside of a building or industrial facility? Good. And so, yes, there is going to, so as we indicated earlier, the actual unit itself um, is really meant for um, outdoor applications. However, we can use the EDM device to take measurements, but at the end of the day, you want to have strong correlation to your existing position. And so therefore we want to be able to use this in a space that would give us good quality data, fixed data, right? So we would obviously be using this thing outside. Um, typically we're looking at uh, um, qualities anywhere between three to four cents with the actual position of the actual GPS unit. So two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters is what's indicated in the precision. But then the EDM has its own precision based on calibration, right? And so we're looking at uh, um, another precision for that all in itself. So all of them tie together. And so for some persons, what they simply do is at the start, they, they generally identify what is called control. They establish a control. And then afterwards, based on that, they're using that level of quality to dictate whatever else they measure afterwards. Yeah, and one more thing I can add to this, uh, Marvin. Um, as Marvin alluded, there's different uh, ways to place the model in its space. Uh, so once you're actually working indoors and you know that you're actually losing satellites and signals, you can use the manual uh, placement uh, configuration to kind of like still uh, leveraging this technology and go through the model uh, and see it from different angles. Next question, is it only available for Android devices? Will it work for iOS devices soon? So I know that uh, this is under development. Um, so currently, since the, the main part of this solution is Catalyst, Catalyst is only Android for now, but uh, I know that this is under development and we don't have any time frame for that at the moment. Here's another question. What is the outdoor limitation uh, to length of view on a phone for models before running into screen issues, etc.? cetera? Um, you, wanna take, you wanna take that one? Yeah, so sure. that is in relation to the, that's in relation to the viewing distance, how far you want it to be away from you? Yeah, well, my understanding here is this is uh, mainly relying on your phone capabilities. 
in terms of the model, the size and the, the digital length of the model, um, as long as it, it all relies on your phone's capability and the way you feel comfortable to work with. Right. And, and if I, you're looking at if you're looking at it also from like um, a standpoint of a model, for example, a building, it, it, it is susceptible to being based on your resolution, as Ali is saying. But at the same time, what's the you have to consider what's the objective behind seeing the object? Are you targeting specific features? So obviously you wouldn't be trying to look on those specific features at a far distance, right? So in retrospect, you, you would be more wanting to be close to the object of interest than to be further away. But if you if you just wanted to see it completely as an object, then yes. Obviously, there's going to be an issue based on the resolution that your phone has. But most of the phones that we're using will allow you to see high resolutions because we spoke about those Android devices or Google Pixel. They have very good resolutions. So it's it's just simply based on the resolution of your device. Thank you. And let's see if we have more questions here. So I got one question here. Um, do I need an internet connection to use um, Trimble Side Vision? Yeah, so Trimble Side Vision can be used with, with without an internet connection. However, you need to have previously downloaded your model from Trimble Connect to the actual mobile device. Um, and also be aware that the GNSS corrections will only be received via satellite, right? So an internet connection is required to download the model to obtain high accuracy GNSS position because you're using a catalyst subscription. And to sync the, the to-do and the measurements, you would need to actually have that in -connect, uh, internet connection for you to actually be able to, to push that information back to the cloud. We have a question here, one more question here. Is there any functionality to your account? I think we already gone through this. Let me show. Sorry, I didn't hear that question, Ali. Sorry, can you repeat it? It's just about uh, discussing about uh, having a basis station. If uh, they could actually use a basis station to uh, configure the connection. Right. So right now, the actual unit is supporting um, catalyst information. Um, and that is uh, presently something that is being offered. But um, there is a tab that is in there for entry based, but right now that's um, not something necessarily that is being promoted, but I'm sure that that is in the works. So we'll definitely follow up with an answer to that question in the coming days. Thank you. Here's another question here. Any utility related to casting screen sharing with this solution? So there's no built-in utility in Sight Vision itself for casting, but you you more than likely can cast based on having an Android-based solution to to do so because you are you have internet on your device. So as long as you have a software, but it's just not in Sight Vision, and there's none prepared by Trimble for um, casting um, or sharing. Yeah, and a good example of this would be what just Marvin did for this webinar, just capturing and, you know, so this was an offline mode, but you could have actually this online mode as well. It just required having an additional complementary app. Solution, right. Yeah. So just think of it, most of us right now, um, sadly, due to, um, social distancing has come to learn about Zoom. So Zoom has a screen sharing section of it. So you could just basically have that software overlaid and pushing the stream out to whoever is looking at it through Zoom. There's another good question here, Marvin. Do you have to calibrate the location of the model in a real world each time? Or can it remember when you placed it last time? Good question. So the actual unit generally has a correlation once it's loaded already. 
um, but, but the CAL file is what is actually dictating whether or not that model will stay in its location. So I'm assuming you're referring to the probably either the manual or the measured method. Um, if you are relating to those, uh, then those will, will generally be placed. Ali, do you want to update me on any of that? Yeah, so and then another interesting is the one that works. That's that's for sure. Um, it is a stored file, but yeah, Ali, would you speak to anything else that has happened? So once uh, you actually do this uh, measured um, calibration and you realize that for some reason the accuracy wasn't it, uh, something that you were expecting uh, because of the, the, the situation or the environment that you're dealing with, uh, you can actually uh, recalibrate. Do you know redo the measurements and and store the new measurements? So we can do it several times until you're happy with the accuracy and and then the model placement. And that's another feature with the measured uh, calibration. Okay. Yeah, I see. There's a. Uh... Some more questions here, but I think we wish the time here. Um, all right, uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining us today and um, you listening in, asking questions to learn more about this solution. Uh, we definitely can get you back to you guys with an answer to the question, the rest of the questions here. And uh, yeah, let us know if you guys have any extra questions and we'd be glad to help you guys with the answer. Thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Marvin. Cheers. Bye.